Darth Vader was born to be a Jedi killing machine on that mechanical table where Skywalker died. Despite all of his victories on the battlefield against the Rebel Alliance and all the planets that he subjugated, Vader's reputation continues to hinge on his massive Jedi kill count. His skill came through hardship and struggle as Vader had to basically relearn how to function as a human being over the first couple weeks in his suit. This included how to fight properly in lightsaber combat. Many adjustments to his suit, fighting style, and especially his lightsaber itself were required. But very soon, he became the unstoppable juggernaut monster that we all know he is today. His lightsaber creation and modifications were absolutely necessary, brilliant, and quite special. Even if Anakin had been able to reclaim his lightsaber from Mustafar, it's likely he wouldn't have been able to use it properly, and he would have just bled the crystal and built him a new one. But this is actually what we are going to be taking a look at in today's holocron. Today, we will be analyzing Darth Vader's lightsaber. Analyzing Vader's lightsaber, going into all of its specifications, and determining how each part of his saber spoke both of his character and aided in the slaughter of countless Jedi. As a quick side note, we will be using Legends material as the sources for this information, as there is a lot more details on how Vader's lightsaber actually works in Legends, and will hopefully reveal just how special this killing machine was. The construction of Lord Vader's new lightsaber would take place about two weeks following his mutilation on Mustafar, after his subsequent loss of his original blue Jedi weapon. Sidious would aid Vader by providing one of his own lightsabers as template and substitution in the meantime. In the end though, his saber would end up as a black version of Anakin's original lightsaber. Darth Vader's lightsaber was actually among the more unique kinds of sabers among Jedi and Sith alike. Unlike most, Vader didn't care too much about style or elegance in the construction of his blade. He used what he knew and worked from that, and worked with what he was comfortable with, which is why his lightsaber looks far more industrial than most. Vader kept the rigid hand grip which aided him in agility in combat, along with the sloped emitter hood and connecting piece in the middle, all of which were reminiscent of Anakin's original design. But the actual size and length of the hilt was far larger than the average lightsaber in an effort to accommodate for his new hand sizes. In keeping with this, he also made the hilt thicker and more robust by making it heavier. His entire suit was bulky and heavy, so having a lightsaber would have been difficult to wield. Lightsabers are by nature deceptively heavy as it is, but with Vader's new body, he required his saber to have more poundage to serve as a proper counterweight. The weight of the hilt also served the purpose of making his strikes have even more punch than a normal lightsaber would. Using Form 5 Gem So required one to put all of their physical strength into their blade strokes, hammering away at enemies' defenses with heavy swings until their strength or their will was broken. Vader favored this form while also employing a two-hand Makashi style, as well as some Sarisu techniques. Just like his saber, Vader refined this style of fighting until it was devastatingly perfect. The construction and weight of his lightsaber was all done for the purpose of these style changes. The rigid grip, which Anakin Skywalker used for the purpose of agility, and for his explosive blade work, Vader actually used for having a wider range of motion while using the Sarisu techniques of his master, Obi-Wan. The weight of the lightsaber, aiding his gem so power moves and making them all the more devastating. What's important to note is Vader could have made the lightsaber length the typical way so that he could use a one-handed style of dueling. However, unfortunately, Vader's main weak spot was located in the center of his chest. This required the Dark Lord to adopt a more measured and controlled style in order to protect his control panel and his sternum. What resulted was a balance of offense and defense that came from no better place than Makashi which Darth Vader used with a two-handed style, and thus justifying the length and thickness of his lightsaber hilt. But the details on Vader's lightsaber go far further than this and just the shell of the hilt. It's now time to talk about the inner workings, of which there are two main focuses. The first would be the high output diadium power cell. A power core is the cornerstone of all lightsabers, and there are many types of which to choose from. But the Diatium power cell in particular was one of the finest. If perfectly constructed, there's a potential that the power cell wouldn't even require regular replacements at all. That was due to its natural rechargeability, 
Vader was very particular about the specifications of his suit and his lightsaber, ensuring optimal efficiency in both fields. One could even say Vader became obsessed with the construction of his lightsaber. But Vader would go even further, continuing to tinker with his lightsaber until he was able to modify the diatium power cell into being able to actually control the intensity of the power with a manual knob. This basically allowed Vader to increase or reduce the power output of his blade itself with just the turning of a button located near the emitter. There were only a few lightsabers in all of the lore that had this feature, as most Jedi of the Clone Wars didn't bother to implement it. This was also a fairly advanced feature to add to one's lightsaber and required a great deal of technical skill in order to pull off. As such, hardly any Padawans or Knights bothered to put it in. This is also due, though, to the volatile nature of the high-output diatium power cell, as if modified incorrectly, the system would become unbalanced, and the blade intensity might fluctuate randomly, but for Darth Vader, the risk was worth the reward. And now his lightsaber had the overcharge feature, much like the ancient retro slavers of the Old Republic era. This specific power cell was important not just because of the reason mentioned, but also because it was necessary for the use of a dual phase focusing crystal. The next unique part of the blade. Uniquely, Vader's lightsaber had not one, but two kyber crystals inside. Since his lightsaber was larger, it was able to accommodate this second advanced feature, with a dual phase focusing crystal basically allowing one to switch the length of the blade between two presets with the flip of a switch. This function was also used by one of the greatest duelists in all of the lore and a fan favorite of ours, the Dark Lord Exar Kun. Exar Kun was the one that developed the dual phase function and made it popular. On Exar's lightsaber, Exar was able to use a dial to shorten or lengthen his saber mid-battle. This served as a sly trick that caught his opponents off guard. It was also unknown whether or not Vader studied Exar Kun, and whether or not it was Exar that gave him the idea of this feature. As we know, Vader wasn't really known as an academic, but it is definitely likely that he either knew of Exar Kun from his studies as a Jedi, or Palpatine could have given him more manuscripts about the Sith Lord, as both Sith, Vader, and Exar were fascinated with lightsaber combat. Either way, Vader admired this feature enough to implement it into his own blade. The dual face function is very similar to a form of lightsaber combat known as Tricata. For those who don't know, Tricata is the name of a lightsaber technique that employs the saber's ability to switch the blade on and off. Usually a user of Tricata would trick their opponent by quickly turning the lightsaber off mid-battle to slip an opponent's guard, and then switch it back off to pull a quick kill. This technique is actually looked down upon in both the Jedi as well as Sith circles. Jedi think of Tricata as unsportsmanlike and dishonorable, whereas the Sith deem it cowardly and weak. Despite this though, the Sith don't seem to mind using dual phase function since one is still technically keeping their blade ignited. Perhaps they see it more as a victory over the opponent's mind since they outsmarted them with the blade rather than using a dirty trick. Either way, Vader didn't seem to mind using it as he usually had his saber length set to medium and then switched it to long range, depending on what kind of opponent he was facing of course. Vader likely didn't use it as a trick but mostly as a setting to accommodate certain battlefield environments. Vader was exceptionally large and bulky so being forced into a tight hallway or a corner would restrict his movements even further further, making him vulnerable, and thus, Vader accommodated this with the dual face function. But now on to my favorite aspect of the Dark Lord's blade. Darth Vader originally used a red synthetic crystal which is common practice for most Sith. However, Vader would opt to eventually switch it out for an organic red kyber crystal. He likely did this using a real kyber crystal as a Jedi and the connection he had to his blade, and this is what aided him in becoming such a devastating warrior as a Sith. Remembering his time as Anakin, Vader was probably sick of everything about him being artificial, so he switched his synthetic crystal for a real one. One where he could feel the force flowing through the crystal in combat in its purest form. Ironically, this both relates and contrasts to Luke Skywalker. Luke, who used a synthetic crystal when building his green lightsaber, since Ilum had been ravaged and destroyed by the Empire, thus making Kyber extremely rare even more rare than it already was. Many believed it to even have become extinct and no more kyber in the entire galaxy, though this is not quite true. Luke, however, made the synthetic crystal in the fireplace of Ben Kenobi's hut. But back to Vader. Using the Empire's resources, he was able to acquire what is called an Adegan crystal to replace the synthetic one. 
The duality of this fact I think is very interesting. The father, who was more machine, desired to have a living crystal, whereas the son, who is more flesh, had to use a synthetic crystal. But anyway, my fellow acolytes, these are the specifications of Lord Vader's lightsaber, and how it was the pinnacle of perfection for him to use. But now I ask you, fellow acolytes of the Force, what are your opinions on the Dark Lord's lightsaber? Is it one of the finest ever constructed? Or, do you believe that out there somewhere among the stars, there are superior blades? As always, my friends, may the Force be with you, and have a great day.